Hi everyone, Kamran Nuri here. In this video, we calculate the electric flux through a cube. In the expression of Gauss law, we usually see the electric flux or the integral of e dot dA over a closed surface, which the law says is proportional to the total charge that is inside that closed surface. The exact mathematical meaning of this flux or the surface integral might be unclear to some students. So this is an example to show how exactly it works. Here is the electric field we use as an example. This is a vector field whose components change in space with x, y, and z coordinates as given. The cube we use is also shown in the figure. It extends from x equal to 2 to x equal to 5 along the x direction, from y equal to 0 to y equal to 3 along the y direction, and from 1 to 4 along the z direction. We divide the flux through the surface of the whole cube into six parts going through the six faces of the cube. For the top face, we call flux going through the top face phi top or simply phi t. For the bottom face, we call the flux phi bottom or simply phi b. For the left face, we use phi l and for the right face, we use phi r. Also, for front face, phi f and for the back face, phi bk. The total flux will be the sum of all of these pieces. So let's start by calculating flux through the top face. The top face of the cube is the region mathematically defined by x between 2 and 5, and y equal to 3, and z from 1 to 4. Since y is equal to 3 for this face, we can find the E-field on this face by subbing 3 for Y in the E-field formula. So E becomes 2X plus 9Z I hat minus XZ squared J hat plus 9XK hat for the top face. But what is DA vector for this face? By definition, the vector DA is perpendicular to the surface at all points and outward from the closed surface. Therefore, it is in the positive Y direction or J hat direction and has a magnitude of a small area. For the small area, we multiply a small increment dx in the x direction and a small increment dz in the z direction. So dA becomes dx dz j hat. Now, what is e dot dA? Remember that the dot product of two vectors can be written in terms of the components of the two vectors. Here dA has only a y component, that means the other two components of dA are zero. E dot dA in terms of components is the x component of E times the x component of dA plus EY times dAY plus EZ times dAZ. Also remember that when a vector is written in unit vector notation, the x, y, and z components of the vector are the factors in front of i hat, j hat, and k hat respectively. So this means that we need to multiply EX by DAX and put that here, then multiply EY by DAY, which goes here, and finally EZ times DAZ goes here. So the first term in the dot product is zero, the second term is negative XZ squared DX DZ, and the third term is also zero. Now we throw away the zeros. Note that this dot product is a scalar now and there are no unit vectors here. So we calculated E dot dA for the top face of the cube. Remember that the flux through the top face is the integral of E dot dA over the top face. So we replace E dot dA by the expression we found and we get this integral. This integral should be calculated over the top face. So it's a double integral over x and z. So x goes from 2 to 5 and z goes from 1 to 4, which are the limits of the top face. As you remember from calculus, this should be considered as nested integrals. The inner integral is over x and the outer integral is over z. To evaluate this double integral, first we can take the negative sign all the way to the front. Now for the inner integral that is over x, z is just a constant, so we can take that out of the inner integral. Now the whole inner integral in the square brackets is a constant for the outer integral which is over z, 
So we can take that also out of the outer integral. Now we end up having a multiplication of two separate integrals. So this double integral is called separable. Now watch this process again in a class setting. For example, let's start with the top. What is the mathematical definition of the top face? Top face has y equal to 3 fixed, right? And x is between 2 to 5. x is between these limits. y is fixed equal to 3. And z is between 1 and 4. So because uh, y is 3, we can put 3 or y in this equation, in, in this electric field, to get electric field for this case. So if we do that, the 2x and uh, 3 times 3, 9z, i hat, uh, minus xz squared, j hat. So, but what is dA for the top face? A small piece like this, it has an extension in the x direction, we call it dx. Extension in the z direction, we call it dz. So the magnitude is dx dz. What is the direction? Up, which is j, right? So this is dA. So dA is dx dz j hat, right? And what is e dot dA? Because we're capitalizing e dot dA, right? You remember the dot product in component form. The dot product is component x component by x component, y component times y component, z component times z component, right? But this has only y component. So this becomes times zero, this times zero, then we get this times that. Right, so the d dot dA becomes negative xz squared times dx dz. Does it make sense? Now this dot product is just a scalar. It's not a vector anymore. I don't have i, j, k here. Now, we want to integrate e dot dA over the, the top face, and we call it phi for top. E dot dA over the top face. This is E dot dA. So I replace the whole thing by that. So it becomes a double integral, and negative it can come out integral uh, over z. Z goes from uh, 1 to 4. So from 1 to 4, uh, for z, from 2 to 5 for x, x z squared dx dz. This is what you get, right? But here, you know, these are separable. Basically, this is the inner integral is for the x, the outer integral is for z, right? But for the integral over z, x, z is constant. We can bring that outside. And then Nothing here in that, in that integral depends on z. Then you can put that outside of the z comp. Uh, you can separate the two integrals. So you can say it's uh, equal to... Sometimes if they don't separate, you have to take inner integral and then put upper limit, the lower limit, and then you get an expression for z, and then take that integral of that on z. But in this case, they are separable. So it becomes two uh, integrals multiplied to each other. Phi top is negative. What is the integral of x dx? One half x squared. One half x squared evaluated between two to five. And then one third z cube evaluated between one and four. Right? and become negative one-half x squared. Five squared minus two squared. And that one becomes one-third. Four cubed minus one cubed. Four cubed minus one cubed. 
minus 1 cubed. Right? So I get 1 sixth here, negative 1 sixth, times 25 minus 4, 21, times this is 64 minus 1. 64 minus 1, 63. So that's the whole integral. Does that make sense? What about for bottom face? For the bottom phase, again, we have x between 2 and 5, but y equal to 0 now, and z between 1 and 4, as before. So we need to sub y equal to 0 in the E field formula, and we get E equal to 2xi hat minus xz squared j hat. And dA vector has the magnitude dx dz again, but in the negative direction of the y axis in this case, or negative j hat. Therefore, e dot dA is now positive xz squared dx dz. So the flux through the bottom phase is the double integral of xz squared dx dz over the same region. Notice that this is exactly the same as the flux through the top phase except for the negative sign. Therefore, these two add up to zero. Now for the left phase, we have x equal to 2 fixed y between 0 and 3 and z between 1 and 4. If we sub 2 for x in the E field formula, we get this expression. Now dA has a magnitude of dy times dz and is perpendicular to the left phase and pointing outward from the cube. Therefore, it is in the negative i hat direction. And e dot dA becomes negative 4 plus 3yz dy dz. Therefore, the flux through the left face is a double integral of negative 4 plus 3yz dy dz over the ranges of y and z. This integrand is the sum of two terms. Therefore, this splits into two separate double integrals. The first one is just the double integral of the constant 4. The second one is the double integral of 3yz. As you will see later, the second term will cancel with the similar term in the flux through the right face. So we only evaluate the first term, which is easy. 4 comes out and the two integrals separate. So the result is negative 4 times 3 times 3, which is the area of the face. The right face is defined by x equal to 5, y between 0 and 3, and z between 1 and 4. The E field expression for x equal to 5 is now this and the a vector is dy dz i hat. So e dot dA becomes 10 plus 3yz dy dz. So the flux through the right face is the double integral of 10 plus 3yz dy dz, which again splits into two parts. The first part is easy as before. The two integrals separate and give 3 times 3, which is the area of the face. Now if we compare the flux through the left and the right faces, we see that the second terms cancel as mentioned before, and the sum of these two fluxes is 6 times 9, which is 54 newton meters squared per coulomb. Now let's do the front and back faces together. They both cover the same range for x and y, but the front face is at the z equal to 4 meters, and the back face is at z equal to 1 meter dA for the front face is dx dy times k hat and for the back face is negative dx dy k hat. Notice that the z component of the E field does not depend on z, therefore it is the same for both faces. And since the dA's only have z components, only the z component of the E field plays a role here. So e dot dA for the front face is 3xy dx dy and that for the back face is negative 3xy dx dy. So the flux going out of the cube through the front face is this integral, which is the same as the flux going into the cube through the back face. So the net outward flux contribution due to these two is zero. Now let's summarize what we had so far. The net outward flux through the top and bottom faces is zero. The net flux of the left and right faces was 54 newton meters squared per coulomb, and the net flux through front and back was also zero. 
So the net total flux is 54 newton meter squared per coulomb. Now we can apply the Gauss law to find out how much net charge must be inside the cube. According to Gauss law, the net outward flux through any closed surface, which is the integral of e dot dA over the surface, is equal to the net charge inside the surface divided by epsilon naught. So for this cube, we have Q inside equals epsilon naught times the total flux, which is 8.85 times 10 to the negative 12 coulomb squared over newton meter squared times 54 newton meter squared over coulomb, which comes to 478 picocoulomb of net charge inside the cube. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching and have a nice day.